Hey everybody, um, welcome to another Flea Market Finds episode. It's uh, actually been a few weeks since I uh, hit the uh, Zagre Farm Tractor Show in Colchester, Connecticut. Uh, it was the first show of the spring. Uh, they have three shows a year there and um, I, uh, I really enjoy that tractor show and they usually have a uh, pretty decent flea market swap meet. I've gotten some pretty good deals there in the past. I did get a couple of deals this past time out, but overall I'd have to say it was, except for, for one interesting, uh, well maybe a couple interesting items, it was kind of a bust. Uh, as far as machinist tools go, I got a couple of little things here and there. So I haven't decided yet, depends how long this video runs, uh, I might add in some stuff that I acquired uh, after that show, I'm trying to think of the chronology thing of the way things ended up here, because I ended up going to that tractor show, and then I ended up also going to the Brimfield Flea Market, which is a huge antique flea market, but I scour that looking for the stray interesting tool. Um, and I did get some buys there. And then I also just yesterday, I hit the used tool store and scored a couple of deals there. So um, that's probably gonna, that'll probably be a standalone video because I think I might have enough with just the, uh, the aforementioned flea markets. So without further ado, uh, the title will probably give away whether or not this is all just from the tractor show or not, but let's dive right in. Uh, so, I get there really early so I can catch this guy when he's unloading his stuff so I can see if I can get any really good deals. And uh, sometimes he has some really nice tools and I've gotten some good deals off him in the past, but this time was kind of a bust. He, uh, he did not have his usual great assortment of stuff, so I ended up um, looking around for a while and all I ended up getting from him was this little pile right here. I got four craftsman wrenches he had these on his 50 cent table so I got these craftsman wrenches for 50 cents a piece 11 16 15 16 um, I look at that I got two 11 16 and a three quarter you know decent condition um, and they're craftsman wrenches so they're pretty good quality so when you can uh, buy a craftsman wrench especially in these larger sizes large being a relative term for 50 cents a piece sure why not so two bucks for these four wrenches then I looked around and I put together this little pile of these four items right here and I got these four items for five bucks um, this is a uh, a six inch coarse half inch by five eighths because there's a little plastic bushing you can take out so it's either half inch or five eighths arbor hole uh, wire wheel appears to be brand new unused it's uh, Sears quality it looks like it might be an old one because it's got a price on it of three dollars and nineteen cents I mean when's the last time you bought something like this at Sears for three dollars and nineteen cents although um, my quality went really far down after a while but anyways this actually looks like it's a pretty decent uh, decent wire wheel I've got so many ball peen hammers now, I don't buy them unless I can really get a really good deal on them. But I knew from this guy in the past, I knew I was going to pay probably like a buck for this if I had it just by itself. The fact that, you know, we pulled it together and I got it, got these four items for five bucks, I could I could easily say I'm into, uh, I'm into all of these items except for one for a buck a piece and one of them for two bucks. Let's say the two bucks was this because this is, this is a Stanley branded ball peen hammer you know you see an older large ball peen hammer like this and it's got the hickory handle on it that's not cracked and split that's always like that's always a keeper a little bit of paint drip there well that's all right so nice ball peen hammer easily worth the buck or two I paid for it and I did find this one large wrench uh, this is a inch and a quarter by inch and sixteenths Billings wrench got some surface rust on it um, But I'm only into this thing for about a buck and this is a Billings is a US made Older company. I've got a few of these Billings wrenches They're nice good quality wrenches They got some age to them, but nothing wrong with that 
And then the last item was this here, which I, I think this is, I don't think this has ever been used. It looks brand new. Looks like it had a sticker on it at one point of two bucks. <laughs> Looks like it might have been a two dollar yard sale item already. Um, what this is is this is a Husky, which is the brand sold through uh, Home Depot. Uh, Thirty-six piece precision screwdriver set, and I thought, well, you know, lots of times I'll be working on like maybe helping my kid with his RC. And I'll need some of these really small screwdriver sizes. And I thought, hey, you know, that's actually a pretty nice complete set. It's got some really small Phillips head bits and that. And unlike the jeweler screwdrivers that I use for these, um, by being able to put them in this larger handle, you can actually, uh, I think, put a little bit more force on it so this is just a swivel I thought maybe that unscrewed so how does that lock in there oh I guess it just clicks in like that all right so what's nice about the swivel is you can rest your hand right there and so I like that I like that little set so now I don't have to always grab my little um, jeweler screwdrivers although I do have I have a few of these. Um, I forgot how you say this brand. Uh, this brand name. It's uh, Willa or Weha. Weha, I think, is how they say it. W i h a. These Weha, made in Germany. These are really nice quality precision screwdrivers for doing the same, same kind of work. Same idea. Got the swivel on the top there, so you can, you know, do this. But anyways, the only problem with these is I don't think I have a complete set. I just was able to, luckily, probably bought a toolbox that had some of these in it at some point. But yeah, these are these are nice quality precision screwdrivers with nice long handles. But this is kind of nice that it's a full set. Everything's right there, and you know I can keep that keep that one of the drawers of the tool chest, and don't have to go fumbling for different sizes. I can just grab this. Then I um spotted another vendor that I've gotten some deals off of in the past but most of the deals I've gotten from him were were storage cabinets and storage types of trays and things like that and I'm kind of I'm pretty much maxed out I'm actually getting rid of some of my storage cabinets because I'm swapping them out because I realized that now that I've got those uh, Vidmar cabinets once I get those situated and I put a lot of my tooling and everything in those, I'm going to be able to empty out a lot of these other cabinets and maybe get rid of some stuff and free up a little more shop space here so I can get a little bit more serious about planning my layout. But then I spotted this. It was in a five-gallon bucket. <laughs> I spotted this uh, bottle jack, and I've got a couple of bottle jacks, but I don't have any this large. Well, I take that back. I do have one, I believe, that is a 20-ton like this. It's on my shop press, my Harbor Freight shop press. So I thought, well, you know, there's no harm in having an extra nice large bottle jack. And I knew that, you know, it's got some surface rust here and that. And I knew from dealing with him in the past that he, he can be very uh, liberal on pricing at times. Enough so that it made sense to me to ask, to inquire about it. And... Uh, we did check it real quickly and it does it does build pressure it does it does actually seem to work doesn't seem to be anything wrong with that and uh, he said how about 10 bucks and I was like yeah sure for 10 bucks you bet even though it doesn't have the you know I gotta get a piece of pipe to go in there to use as a handle um, it's a Sears you know so this is gonna be I would say it's probably safe to say that this would be better quality than the Harbor Freight, um, even though when Sears had this made for them, they may very well have had this made for them by a company. Matter of fact, it says right there, made in Taiwan. Okay, Sears Roebuck and Company, made in Taiwan. So, you know, is it really any better quality than Harbor Freight? Well, the question is... Is it made in Taiwan to specifications that um, Sears required? I noticed this does not say Craftsman on it. It just says Sears. So, anywho, I guarantee you 
this sold for more money new in Sears than the same size bottle Jack sold, sells for in Harbor Freight. But hey, for 10 bucks it was worth it. And he even uh, gave me the five gallon pail that it was in, which wasn't cracked. And you know, hey, who can't use an occasional extra five gallon pail for whatever? So I misspoke before when I said that the first items I bought were those Craftsman wrenches. Actually, while I was waiting for him to unload all his stuff, I spotted a guy on the backside of him who had something on his trailer, and I went over and I inquired about it, and within moments of uh, some brief haggling, I was the proud owner of that item. As a matter of fact, uh, that was actually the last thing I picked up that day. We left it on his trailer until I was ready to leave, and then when I was ready to leave, I went out got my uh, truck from the parking area, and I drove in to pick that item up. That item is currently sitting outside, um, so it's the evening now, so I'll have to wait. Uh, well, you won't have to wait at all. It'll be instantaneous because of the magic of video. But tomorrow morning, I'll give you a look at that, and I left one item in the truck that I'm also going to give you a look at that is non-machinist related, but um, it, it's something that I, I kind of have a weakness for when I could buy them right and then end up buying but anyways, let's get to uh, the rest of this. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is almost all of what's left. Start right here. Uh, I spotted this on a guy had a blanket on the ground with a bunch of stuff on it. And I spotted this chuck key, this big chuck key. And I thought, oh, I wonder if that's a genuine Jacobs. And sure enough, it is. This is a genuine Jacobs number five. I would venture to guess that this chuck key probably brings 15 or 20 bucks on its own on eBay. It's in very, very good condition. There's some surface rust on here, but looking at the business end of this thing, I would say this has seen very little wear, and I got this chuck key for three bucks. I was quite happy with that. Huh. So I just checked. I figured it was for one of the really large chucks. It's uh, too large for the 18N, but it fits my 20N chuck. Um... Uh, my 20 n Jacob Super Ball Bearing Chuck, it's a perfect fit for that. So I believe this would be the correct key for that chuck. Thing is, my 20 n that I have already has a key with it. So this is going to be a spare, and I don't plan on getting another 20 n anytime soon. So I guess, uh, I guess I could actually offer this for sale. This might end up on Steve's basement. It is in excellent shape, so that's nice. Those of you uh, who follow my channel regularly are probably thinking, Steve, I thought we talked about this. I, I thought we said you were going to seek help and lay off the surface gauges. Well, <laughs> I spotted this bad boy and uh, looked at it, looked it over, and I really liked the look of it. And I was like, boy, that thing screams Starrett. That sure as heck looks like a Starrett gauge. So... um because of the rusty condition and everything, I got this for five bucks. And this will probably clean up pretty decent. I've had had a couple that were, you know, not so great looking, and they cleaned up a lot better than you might think. This one, the pins are probably, yeah, seized on it. But the unfortunate thing about it is I, I looked, once I uh, owned it and looked at it more closely, I realized... That it is clearly marked. It is a craftsman. Now, the question is, okay, who would have made this for craftsmen? In other words, yeah, it's badged craftsmen, but craftsmen would have had this made for them by somebody, right? So, back in the day, who do you think they would turn to to make these things for them? I mean, I'm just wondering because... There are certain things, like the way that this little piece is on, attached on the bottom here. I mean, there are certain things about this thing that really, the shape of the ball end, that just scream, stare it to me. So, I may be wrong, but if I were a betting man, I would say, I would bet that this is made by stare it for craftsmen. Five bucks. Another vendor I came across, he didn't have really squat that caught my eye, but then I I saw this one lonely call it, and I figured, well, there's no sense in leaving that. I think he probably had more of them, and somebody was digging through the box and found them all and just kind of missed this one. 
So this is a uh, this is a thirteen sixteenths. I have no idea who the maker is on this. It's branded R dash S dash B. So I don't know. It's an interesting logo on here. So what's cool about this logo is it's almost like an arrow. You can see the arrowhead to the left and the tail of the arrow to the right of the B. So it's RSB and an arrow. So I don't know who makes that call it. But here's the thing. I got the call it and this feeler gauge set for three bucks. And what I like about this feeler gauge set, well, aside from the fact that it's a KD tool, okay, which is made in the USA. KD Tools is a, a well-known manufacturer of automotive specialty tools. And um, this is a KD number 160 feeler gauge set. And what I like about this feeler gauge set, which is kind of cool, is it's got these little narrow... Well, for one thing, it's got long reach, okay? Right? So you can reach down in further with these more traditional sizes here but then on the opposite end of each one there's these tapered ones all right which would be really good for setting maybe like point gap and things like that where you're going to get into a much smaller tighter spot so i just thought that was a nice little neat set and i think that alone was worth the three bucks i paid for these two items and I got a free call. And this call is actually in excellent condition. And I came across a guy who uh, had a bunch of just various junk. These are spanners, two bucks a piece. Notice the wideness of the end on here. Okay, and the profile. I think these might be for snugging up some sort of collet closer or something. I'm not positive. They are marked WRZZ and then either an O or a zero right here. This one is marked WRZ and an O over here. All right, so these are collet closer wrenches. Uh, spanners for collet closers. They're made by a company called Universal Engineering. Um, and Universal Engineering makes the collet closers that these are used on. And the WRZZ, the larger one right here, this one, right now, there is only one of these listed on eBay. Well, actually, there's two, but it's the same guy. He's got a quantity of two. He's asking $47.50 a piece for used ones of these uh, with free shipping. Um, however, that's his ask. He doesn't have a best offer on it. And... I looked for sold, and nothing has sold in the past 90 days. And, of course, we get the uh, WRZ, which is the smaller size one here. You know, who knows what that's worth. So, I think for now, I'll probably hold on to these. I may end up, who knows, I may end up finding something around here that I've forgotten has a very similar type of nut that this would work well on. Um, so... For the time being, I'll hold on to these, but I, I definitely didn't get hurt getting these for two bucks a piece, that's for sure. And the last small item I've got to show you uh, is this little inside caliper. I've got quite a few of these. I don't tend to buy these anymore unless I can buy them really cheap, and I buy them for resale usually. I uh, went through my whole, my whole caliper collection, and I weeded out all my extras and spares and figured out what I wanted to keep and uh, sold everything else off. This is a sweet little, very clean Sterrett. Uh, so it's engraved right here with some initials from the original owner or some, some owner at some point. But it's in, it's in really good shape. And, uh, you know, I got this for three bucks. So that's not bad. That's not bad at all for a genuine Starrett inside caliper. So I'll just give you a sneak peek. The only bad thing about the 11 draw Kennedys is the front cover is so big. It obscures everything, but 
this is my little caliper ward. I actually also got a set of trammel points in here. These aren't all Sterrett. Most of them are either Sterrett or Brown and Sharp. I like I like these little these little cute ones here. <laughs> so I got three sizes of that style. Some of these here. These are really nice. These are sweet right here. So these are the shafts are, are round. Okay. So that's what makes these really neat. I got three sizes of those inside. And here, this looks to be what I just picked up. Yep, winter winter chicken dinner. Yeah, these are identical. Um, that's only got a little bit of engraving there. This one's got kind of a more obtrusive engraving of somebody's initials on there. So I guess we'll swap these out. I'll keep that one now. And that'll be the that'll be the one for sale. All right. So before I reveal it, this is the most expensive item that I bought that day. And I actually saw this item uh, earlier in the day, walked by, saw the price on it, saw another item that he had on his uh, table there that was non-machinist related, made an offer on that, he turned me down on that. Uh, this, I didn't initially think about it too much. Um, then as I thought about it more, I realized, boy, you know, that price that he's got on there is pretty reasonable. Um, he had told me that these things sell on Amazon for like over 900 bucks. Uh, then I started thinking, well, you know, the thing is, it doesn't have all the accessories and everything, so, boy, it could get really expensive real quick if you had to buy those, yada, yada, yada. But then I confirmed that this item is still available on Amazon, so I went back and I put together a deal. I said, how firm are you on the price on that thing? And he says, eh, pretty firm. I mean, the things are, you know, again, he had 200 bucks on it, and he was like, hey, you know, the thing sells new for over 900 So then I went back and I looked at the other item he wanted. And I said to him, I tell you what I'll do. I'll give you 200 for the two. Now the other item I had made him an offer of 30 bucks on and he had passed. He wanted 40 bucks firm on that item. I'll show you that item near the end. Left it out in the truck. Point is, when he agreed to my deal... I figured if I did get the item for 30, you know, then I'm into this for 170 bucks. Ready? Now, some of you are going to have no idea what this thing is. I had a suspicion I knew what it was when I first looked at it because it was very reminiscent of something I've seen. And what this is, is this is a fuel injector nozzle tester for diesel engines okay um i think they also call these pop-off testers amongst other things and what this is is this is a special testing unit that you use you hook up your diesel injectors to this machine and this machine can develop the very very high pressures that are uh used to um, run diesel injectors on diesel engines. Diesel engines have to have extremely high pressure and force to get the fuel into the combustion chamber when that piston's coming up because the high compression has to be overcome. So to test diesel injectors, you need something that can develop really high pressure and what you do is you can actually, you can actually, I don't know exactly how to use this yet, but you can actually pump up very high pressure and you can actually read the gauge. And the idea is this is a, this is a little reservoir, okay? And you fill this up with, um, some guys use kerosene. They also make a special test liquid for use with, um, injectors. If you put diesel fuel in here, that's considered to be unsafe, I think. So I think that's why they don't recommend that. But anyways, the way that, 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 that this works is you pump up the pressure and you actually read the gauge at the point where 
the injector fires or sprays and it has to be within a certain spec or the injector's bad. The other thing you're looking for is you're actually looking for what kind of a spray pattern comes out of the injector. And another thing you're looking for is you're looking for any leakage, any leakage prior to it actually spraying or post-spraying. Because sometimes you can have an, a bad injector that will continue to dump fuel into that cylinder after it's supposed to have stopped. And, and that's also bad, obviously. But anyway, so let's get to, to exactly what this is. So they're calling this the uh, Nozzle Raider number 4200 Model B Diesel Injection Nozzle Tester. And ladies and gentlemen, there it is right there on Amazon, still available today for $915. Uh, free shipping with Prime. So 915 bucks for this thing. And uh, it's actually got two people rated it and gave it four and a half stars. So funny story is I'm walking out with this thing and a guy spots me carrying it. And he had seen this thing on the other guy's table. And he says, oh, hey, you bought the diesel uh, inject tester. Yeah. I said, yeah. I said, yeah, you know, it's got a really good deal on it. I mean, the, the, the thing's so crazy expensive. He says, yeah, yeah. He said, but it doesn't have any of the nozzles or anything with it. So I don't know whether or not the guy who was selling it to me knew it or not. And I don't think this guy knew it. But this price, the $915.22, this is just for this unit that you're seeing right here. It does not come with any nozzles. It does not come with any hoses. It comes basically with what you see right here for $915. If you want to buy the nozzles that's more money so the bad news is that um <laughs> these kits are not cheap there's one right there all right so that one is the uh the model 4201 adapter set it's 655 bucks just for that case with the rigid steel line and various adapters so that you can hook this up to various different injectors. There's also this one called the 4202, which is a much smaller set. Uh, this one on this particular website is $235 and change. So it kind of stinks that it would be really expensive to buy the whole set of uh, connectors. But um, the point is that uh, the guy who saw me walking out with this thing thought that I still might have, you know... Not really gotten that great of a deal because he was probably thinking that when you buy the thing for 900 and some odd dollars on Amazon that it comes with all the fittings, but it does not. So here's my theory uh, on this. My theory is what I wanted this for uh, is to test the injectors on the Oliver 770's engine, which is the, uh, the Waukesha six-cylinder diesel. My thinking was... Uh, I'd like to maybe try and um, rebuild those injectors if I can. Here's the plan. The plan is, instead of buying a special kit that's very expensive with a whole bunch of fittings and adapters, I'm going to try and see if I can't fashion just one adapter to use with this thing on those particular injection nozzles. Then I can use this to test my nozzles, rebuild as necessary, retest them, and put the known good rebuilt ones in. I think I could put this to use. Uh, I could probably figure out how to make an adapter to make this work. So what the guy did is he put this test, he put this uh, brass plug in here just to block this off so the fluid wouldn't be coming out every time somebody grabbed the handle. What was in there was this little elbow right here, which just kind of gives it come out at an angle. I even think I have some uh, rigid steel lines left over from the old backhoe that I scrapped, which had a Detroit 353 two-stroke in it. So I could probably use one of those lines and probably find some adapters and actually be able to, to use that. So I don't know yet exactly how this thing works. Um, I know that if I, I close this valve, I can't push the handle down at all. Okay, as soon as I open this valve, this moves. 
And if I close this valve, I can pump this and build pressure. So that actually is going up. So believe it or not, that inside gauge right there is PSI. That's over 4,500 PSI that I just developed on this thing. So this appears to be working. I'm just going to figure out there's also a valve on the back here. I'm not sure exactly what this does. And I'll probably be able to find some instructions online to use this. So for the time being, we're just going to, you know, we'll put this off to the side until we get to that point where we decide to do some serious work on the Oliver injectors. But I'm very happy with my purchase on this. Still got the sticker on here for 200 bucks. He used some painter's tape. Um, maybe I'll leave that on there to remind me of what... Although, like I said, I actually... I got this and the other item for 200 I went out and grabbed the other item. It's actually the next morning. Non-machinist related. It's this chrome lollipop microphone. This is an Estatic D104 microphone. Estatic is a microphone company, a uh, very famous microphone company, been around for a long, long time. And uh, somewhere, I think maybe in the 70s, they came out with their D104 model microphone. And what this is, is this is a, I believe, a ceramic cartridge microphone. And the earliest ones just had a, I think they were non-amplified. And then Static introduced the amplified mic or the power mic as they called it and what they did was they put a circuit board down in here a little pre-amplifier stage that would pre-amplify this this is actually designed for cb radio use which cb was huge in the 70s and after a while people really started getting into wanting bigger and more power and more modulation so power mics came to be and this is one of the most famous power mic designs probably in cb history this and the turner Plus 3B, I think, was probably one of the other really big. Turner and Estatic were the two big names in power microphones that were competing with each other in, in the height of the CB era. They even had a model they called the Golden Eagle. And the Golden Eagle was plated in, I think, 24 karat gold, if I'm not mistaken. I forget exactly, but it, it was plated with gold. I have one of those Golden Eagles. The reason why I bought that microphone was because when I was younger and I was into CB, the there were two radios in particular that were considered the absolute um, cat's meow in base CB base stations. These were the big boat anchor CB radios, and one was the Browning Mark III, and then there was the uh, Tram D201, and then they came out with the D201A. But the Tram D201 and the Browning Mark III were both tube radios. So they were very stout, robust radios. And the Browning microphone looked like a Turner microphone, but it just uh, had a brown color to it to match the cases on the radio or the front of the radio. But I always thought it would be cool to have a Browning Golden Eagle, which is what the Mark III was called. It was called the Golden Eagle radio with its own golden eagle d104 to go with it i don't want to bore you too much you guys you know what i'd like to do is i'd like to do a video on my radio collection at some point right now my radio collection is a lot of it is still in boxes all over the place because i um i haven't had room to really display them but at some point i want to set up a uh, some shelves in my office and um uh, clean up a lot of those radios and put them on display and then probably quite frankly because the, the my interest in that particular hobby has kind of waned i'm more interested in fixing them up and cleaning them and, and repairing them than i am in actually using them uh so probably i'll start selling them off but i'd like to show the collection before i get rid of it show all of my radios and uh so we'll, we'll probably hopefully I'll live long enough to get that done, <laughs> so you guys can actually see a uh, see a little bit of my radio collection. All right, so let's go take a look at the final item for this episode, which is the first item that I purchased, and it's not something I really needed, uh, but I got a hell of a deal on it, and then I ended up 
uh, deciding that, you know what, I think I'm going to swap out one of the ones I have with it. Well, let's go take a look. So, oh, again, this had 40 bucks on it. He was pretty firm on this, but then I ended up getting it with that um, tester for 200 So I think I'm into this for 30 and the tester for one, 170 A static D104 microphone. If you're into old vintage, you know, audio and stuff like that, you can't help but appreciate the design. So guys, there it is. I certainly did not need another Rollaway Kennedy toolbox base. Okay. Um, all the draws work really nice. They work well. Uh, no major dents in it that I can see. The issue is we've got rust on the front of this draw that's pretty bad that's causing the paint to peel. Interesting, the, the other draws actually look like they're in pretty good shape. It's just weird that that one... It's got the uh, what I believe are the original casters on it, which are really nice heavy-duty casters, and they all work. Too fixed and too swivel. It's got the handle on the side, wheeling it around. It's a good-sized box. I don't remember what model this is. In one of these draws, I think that uh, Kennedy puts the sticker. There's also this rust in the bottom here. So you can see there's rust in the bottom corner of this draw, but the rest of the draw is pretty good. But all the slides work really well. The handles are all the original handles. They look like they're in great shape. So let's cut to the chase. Why did I buy it? I bought it because I saw it on the back of the guy's trailer, and he had, you know, just pulled in. It wasn't even finished setting up yet. And uh, I said, uh... What are, you, what are you asking for the Kennedy? He says, uh, I don't know, make me an offer. And I was like, thinking to myself, I don't need it. So I really want to buy it at a price where I can know that I can turn around and resell it if I decide I don't want it. And I said, 60 bucks. Actually, I think I might have said 50, and I think he counted with 60. But I ended up getting it for 60 bucks. 60 bucks, even with the rust on it. That's a hell of a good deal for a Kennedy base. And here's the thing. I mean, way back when, when I first was getting into this this hobby and hoarding tools, uh, and way before I acquired these two beauties right here, um, with the 11 draws and the intermediate cabinets and everything, uh, long before that, I scored, I think this might have been my first Kennedy base that I bought. That one right there. Now, I bought that Kennedy base. I don't remember if it had a riser on it at the time, uh, but I do remember it did have a top box, which I already sold the top box a while back because uh, I had one too many top boxes. Anywho, um, I believe I did a video on this back in the day, and I called it the Ugly Kennedy Toolbox. And I showed that basically it's got a lot of overspray of green paint on the front. Somebody was painting in the near proximity to this thing and did a number on it. It had an STP sticker there. It's got a Matco Tools sticker on it. If you value your life, don't mess with my tools. Okay. Here's the issue with the box, the main issue. At some point, somebody broke the original Kennedy handles and they replaced three of the handles with these um, kitchen drawer drop. What this really needs is this needs a paint job and three new poles, maybe four, because for some reason they, they did this god-awful thing and screwed right through the pole to put this handle on there. It's essentially the same model as that one right there. I'll probably make this cabinet go away. I'll probably sell this dirt cheap and, you know, somebody can use it if they want to take the time and put the handles on it fix it up. And I'll uh, swap it out with the other one. And the reality is I might not even keep that one eventually because I'm probably going to get to the point, especially with the new Vidmar cabinets that I picked up, when I put all my tools and everything away, I probably don't even need... I might not even need two Kennedys when I get done. You know, who knows? The 11 draw on the left, that's the one I plan on dying with. That's a beautiful box. Uh, the 11 draw on the right here, this is my first 11 draw when I decided that I wanted an 11 draw. 
I acquired this one. Okay. This has got the more classic handle setup. So this is a different model number than this one. This is actually a more expensive box new because it's got the different types, the different style of handles, and it's got a separate independent key lock for the uh, the center draw. Uh, whereas this one, this only gets secured when you put the whole front up and close the top. This one had no lock in it when I bought it, and that one I was able to get the original riser, this roll away, this all was together, and I don't even have it on there yet, but I sit down on the other end of the shop, I've got the, the box that hangs on the side. It's a small, narrow box, and I don't even want to tell you how crazy that box is uh, price-wise. Even use that box because it's not as common. Uh, the price is kind of high on those. Well, so that's it. We're going to close out this video here. I probably, with all this rambling, I probably made this video long enough, even though we didn't have a whole lot of meat on the bone in this one. So the next uh, next time you guys see me for a uh, flea market finds video, uh, I think we're probably going to go over the stuff I picked up at the Brimfield Flea Market. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please like and subscribe. Take care.